I'm getting into crypto. With FTX, you in? We're providing gives 360 degree access to the crypto markets with the ability to trade everything from alts to DeFi. I believe I'm in, but still hate you. Understood. Take care, best of the family. Is he in? Yep. Did he say he hates you? He did. Even on the phone, that guy sounds handsome. The founder of FTX, Sam, he's, he's very uh, committed to that, uh, setting a standard of what it means to be socially responsible within the successes of crypto, and uh, I can get behind that as well. Yeah. You know, I think one thing that we've seen, which frankly I think we've appreciated, has been that, especially when we've talked to people like, you know, like Steph Curry, like Tom Brady, they've done a lot of diligence on us. It's not like we called them up and we're like, hey, we got some money you want to send a sketchy to, and they're like all over it. Like, that's absolutely not what's happening, you know? Um, but I, I do think that, especially, you know, 2017, you saw some things that looked distressingly like that, and I think those didn't end so well. And I think a lot of what we're thinking is, like, what can we do that is sort of highly engaging and powerful and can reach tens of millions of users without diluting our brand? Um, I don't think there are a lot of people in the world who, who kind of clearly fit that, but I think, you know, uh, Tom and Steph are, are two of them. And and, and I think, you know, we've been really excited working with them because they've been excited about this too. They're, they're, they're great guys um, and they're engaged and, and that makes us a lot, uh, right. you know, uh, a lot more jazz for it. Look at what but precipitated some of the 2008 financial crisis. crisis. You saw uh, a number of bilateral bespoke, bespoke non-reported uh, transactions, transactions happening between financial counterparties, which then got repackaged and re-leveraged again and again and again, such that no, no one knew how much risk was in that system until it all fell apart. If you compare that to what happens on FTX or other major cryptocurrency venues today, there is complete transparency about the full open interest. There is complete transparency about the positions that are held. There is a robust, robust, consistent risk framework applied. And we're excited to work with the CFTC on our uh, US license and regulated venue. You know what? I'm just glad that, you know, when it came to Steph Curry and Tom Brady, they weren't in it for the money. Uh, they really wanted to make the, the world better. They wanted more people to be involved in cryptocurrency. And after they did their due diligence and research into FTX, they said, this is what I can put my name behind uh, and promote it to millions of people worldwide and, and to our, our own individual fans. And a huge shout out to FTX and St. Bankman Freed. You know, SBF, there really was not a better way to phrase it in front of Congress saying that there needs to be a change in the space. Transparency is lacking and FTX is here to be an example of lacking transparency. So well put, congrats to you, Academy uh, Award, whatever the, they throw those awards out. Um, Academy uh, Acting Award to you, SBF, congrats. But moving on, uh, a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of FUD behind Crypto.com, uh, shady transactions for uh, proof of uh, funds, proof of assets, whatever you want to call it, uh, proof of reserves. You're seeing multiple exchanges possibly participating in a system where they're shifting funds before a snapshot, snapshot happens so they can provide proof that they have certain funds within their ecosystem, within their holdings, some shady things, whether it's true or not. Some exchanges haven't come out and said, hey, this is absolutely false. Some have, and, and there's red flags, obviously. But a huge, huge shout out as we start today to Mario Nafal. I hope I pronounced that right. Mario has been covering this on Twitter day in and day out. You saw a quarter over a quarter million people tune in into over a nine hour Twitter live uh, with him. You had the likes of CZ from Binance. You saw MEXC show up. You had multiple exchanges come to this um, Kraken and others coming online and, and answering questions from concerned uh, crypto investors, people in the crypto space, answering all their questions. So a huge shout out to everyone that did come out of the space. If you didn't, there's big names. Even Elon Musk joined this, uh, I think, yesterday, the day before. But huge shout out to Mario and everything he's doing. Um, I, I was part of this. Uh, didn't talk in the space, but I listened to it for a, a, a few minutes. And it was fantastic, some of the information that we got to find out. And it kind of keeps you up to date on breaking news. So when he does it again, definitely somewhere it's better than uh, Fox News so uh, or any news anchor uh 
at that point. But moving on, let's talk about this whole crypto.com situation and whether it's fear, FUD, and whether it's really legitimate. And so the situation we all know, we know from the past, crypto.com sent an excess of funds before in the past to some Australian woman who spent their $10 million they sent her. But this situation is very different. And this is something that we got to know a little bit more about during the Twitter space because there was someone there talking about how exchanges actually transfer funds to other exchanges. And they said that in this specific situation, according to the Twitter space, there's three specific people that have to uh, agree or there, there's a form of three checkpoints before funds are actually transferred. Three specific key individuals have to sign off on this happening. So to see accidental funds of 320,000 Ethereum, Mind you, if you do the math on that, that's well over like 300 million plus dollars. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm doing my paper math real quick, that's a lot of Ethereum to send accidentally to Gate.io specifically. Ironically, that's the 21st. Gate.io on the 28th of October shows proof of reserves and then sends the 285,000 Ethereum back. What people are wondering is this kind of a scheme that's happening between multiple exchanges where before a proof of reserves happens, they send some Ethereum over to them in order for them to showcase they've got plenty of funds on hand and then send that back before after the uh, proof of reserve snapshot happens. So there's a lot of speculation on this happening. The real situation is, and then Chris, the, the CEO behind Crypto.com said it was supposed to be a move to a new cold storage storage address but was sent to a whitelisted external exchange address. We worked with Gate Team, uh, blah, blah, blah. Really, nobody really cares. The, the situation is twofold, and you can really only have two opinions on this situation. Either one, this is sketchy, that, that this was purposeful, and, and there's a shady scheme to prop up each, other exchange, each other's exchange for the sake of taking advantage of the users and lying to users that their exchanges are perfectly fine and have uh, they're not insolvent. That's the first opinion. The second is this is absolutely child's play that you send that much Ethereum accidentally. So do you even trust an exchange at that point that just willy nilly sends funds that in an accidental fashion to something like that, which supposedly can't be on accident. So in the end, whether you're number one or your option number two, if you don't believe in if, if you're on either side, if you don't trust and they're sketchy and your kind of red flag is going off, there's a reason cold wallets exist. There's a reason I have a ledger and why everyone should have a ledger. And, and this just goes to show you why you should not trust exchanges withholding your funds. If you can't trust them to send funds properly or you can't trust them that they're not some shady scheme happening, then just get your crypto off exchanges. This is not there's no need to spread all the, the the fear and speculation and conspiracy, just get your crypto off there. But this was also verified by Cointelegraph talking about the situation as far as crypto.com accidentally sending Ethereum, uh, which was recovered a few days after. It was just coincidental that it was uh, around the time of the snapshot. So it was, it was interesting, right? Uh, but the, the CRO token was absolutely demolished after this news came out. A lot of this started coming out. It went down as I think about five and a half cents, dropped over 30% at one point and it's recovered a little bit, but it's just absolutely terrible. But they're not the only one uh, outside of Gate.io and Crypto.com. Hyobi was detected transferring over 10,000 Ethereum after releasing its asset snapshot. This was also then further uh, verified as far as this occurring by uh, Quindelegraph, Hyobi, Gate.io under fire for allegedly sharing snapshot using loan funds. This is this. This just goes to show you how much shadiness potentially is behind this entire ecosystem. And if you just can't trust exchanges, just get your crypto off of them. It's it's that simple. Um, it's it's not difficult to. I think ledgers are what 80, 90 bucks. You can probably get a decent one. Um, you know, you can get a cold storage wallet pretty cheaply. And if you've got thousands of dollars on an exchange spend 50 bucks so that you don't have to worry about those funds being frozen and possibly never ever 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 getting any form of access back to those funds again it's just that 
simple. If you can't trust exchanges, get your crypto off of them, regardless of which exchange it is. But there have been some that specifically came onto the Twitter live by Mario, uh, including the likes of MEXC. Uh, so that was good to see, seeing that they're willing to come on and, and be, be interrogated, for lack of better terms, which was great to see as far as them being more than public uh, about some of this. Ben Zhao, the CEO of Bybit, talked about the situation saying, hey, we're not exposed to FTX, don't have any trading houses like Alameda, Bybit's fully reserved. So a lot of these exchanges coming out, Bitfinex coming out, saying they're going to provide proof of reserves. The problem is everything's on blockchain, so it's 100% transparent, and there's plenty of people willing to investigate to see what kind of shady stuff happens, that they're going to catch you in the act if you're going to try to loan uh, some Ethereum or loan some BTC to another exchange in order to pass your proof of reserve. So take this kind of with a grain of salt as far as what the proof of reserves really means, uh, especially when it, and it appears that there's potentially some kind of scheme happening between multiple exchanges. But with that said, moving on to some FTX news. Now, the actual location of St. Bankman Freed and SPF is, is kind of still unknown. According to Bahamas authorities, they say they have them under supervision or under um, they're, they're following their moves. It was kind of vague whether they actually have them in custody, in physical custody, or they're just tracking their moves and seeing what they're doing. It was kind of vague to that point. But uh, Coffee put this out because this was a very, very controversial thing that people in Bahamas were able to start withdrawing their funds. Now, it comes out that FTX was faking an order from the Bahama regulators to sneakily withdraw funds while everything was paused, only to have the Bahama regulator then to say that FTX was lying about this. So they can see this by FTX official. Per our Bahaman, Bahamian headquarters regulation regulators, we have begun to facilitate withdrawals of Bahamian funds. As such, you may have seen some withdrawals processed by FTX recently as we complied with regulators. So this was supposed, this is coming out to be a lie because uh, the SEC at bah in the Bahamas says, hey, we did not say or authorize or suggest them to process withdrawals for Bahamas, Bahamian clients. Um, now, as far as ripple effects, there's just been a lot of ripple effects, a lot of ecosystems specifically on Solana. And I talked about this over a week ago. A lot of people hated the fact that I talked so negatively about Solana, but it's just a matter of fact that even though Solana is its own ecosystem, it's controlled separately from FTX and, and Segment Manfred, the form of involvement and the level of involvement the SBF and FTX had in Solana will stain the name of the Solana ecosystem for a very, 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 very long time. This is starting to see, we're starting to see the repercussions of this specifically of Serum, one of the most popular, if not the most popular uh, decks on uh, Solana. So Serum it looks like FTX might have minted Serum tokens off thin air to prop up its balance sheet. Would not be surprised if this came out to be true. Total supply increased by 60% just this year alone via two huge mints. They're not previously disclosed based on information that was able to be found. And you could excuse me, see the, the details of this right here, February and in May. What's interesting enough as well is that earlier today, this was yesterday, it was reported that FTX valued its serum position at $2.2 billion USD, the largest position on its balance sheet. Now, the question that most people have is, well, if you look at the serum market cap, it's only at $65 million. How were they able to value it at $2.2 billion? And you start to see the same situation play out as how they valued their FTT token and the amount of assets they had in FTT as far as trying to calculate and include those assets being FTT tokens that are currently unlocked. Uh, and or currently locked. So they had billions of dollars worth of FTT tokens that weren't in circulation and they used the fully diluted market cap of FTT on their balance sheet to prop up their numbers. They do, they're doing the same exact thing and they did the same exact thing with Serum as the fully diluted market cap of Serum would have been around $2.2 billion if it hadn't dropped 40% today. But on top of that, you know, you can kind of see that the market cap at 65 million and the fact that only 3% of the supply is in circulation. So it makes absolute sense that they would do the scammy, shady thing to promote their assets under management being the likes of the fully diluted market cap. Now, uh, you can see here, the problem with the whole serum ecosystem is they had to go through an emergency fork because the true power over serum rested with the FTX group, 
who continues to hold the program update authority keys. And this is a problem and a concern that started to come out after FTX was hacked late Friday night. On top of that, the liquidity hub Serum was then forked by developers. So both SRM and MSRM tokens and fee discounts were not changed, working as before said the developers because the original developers went silent. A lot of people really didn't know what was happening. And so they had to do an emergency fork in order to continue with the overall uh, ecosystem. So they said the devs that depend on Serum are forking the program because the upgrade key to the current one is compromised. This has nothing to do with SRM or even Jump. A ton of protocols depend on Serum for market liquidity and liquidations. So absolutely terrible for those who are maybe holding SRM. It's just another uh, project caught, caught in the crossfire of this whole situation. And on top of that, this is even worse. So, so the Lana's wrapped Bitcoin price absolutely tanks. You can see right now it's sitting at, if I update it very briefly, uh, sitting at $1,618. This is wrapped Solana, a uh, wrapped Bitcoin on Solana. Uh, the problem is that the SOBTC tokens were wrapped Bitcoin tokens issued by FTX or Alameda because both are now in bankruptcy chapter 11 proceedings. Uh, the BTC tokens are no longer redeemable. So it's just one thing after another. Like I said, we're going to see more projects, more companies come out saying they were the byproduct of FTX byproduct of uh, Alameda research. Uh, sadly, the Solana ecosystem is getting hit the hardest behind all of this, but it just goes to show you that just we're, t we're at the tip of the iceberg and so, so much more is gonna be found out in the next upcoming weeks. And just be mindful that we're not out of this situation by any means. Uh, this is, like I said, is probably gonna continue for another month, month and a half, possibly even two months before we really start to see uh, a form of recovery. So stay safe out there. Safeguard your crypto. It's honestly the best thing you could do for yourself today is spend, I don't know what, 60, 70 bucks has been forever since I had this um, and save yourself potentially thousands. So if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the content, hit the like button. And until next time, guys, stay invested.